Okay, thank you. Um, um, good morning and happy new year. Uh, my name is John Hosford. I am the art librarian at Scholes Library at Alfred University. Um, whoops. And I'd like to start out with um, a land acknowledgement. Um, we consciously and intentionally recognize, acknowledge, and honor that we are gathering on the traditional ancestral lands of the Onondagawa, Great Hill People. The Seneca Nation of Indians, Keeper of the Western Door, are the largest of six nations that constitute the Haudenosaunee Iroquois Confederacy of Nations. Alfred University created this land acknowledgement two years ago, and I'm trying to take opportunities to use it and think about it, um, which hasn't happened um, frequently in the past two years. So that, that's a New Year's resolution that I'm trying to, to accomplish. Um, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience with redesigning um, the instruction program for the first year students in the art program, also known as the foundations program here at Alfred University. I've worked at Scholes Library for 15 years. I started my career as um, in Scholes as the visual resources curator, where I had the opportunity to um, give instruction sessions on locating and use of images, copyright, uh, creating images for um, art historians and faculty. And I also had the opportunity to fill in uh, with library instruction um, as needed. Um, I accepted my current position as art librarian in 2018. And this morning, I would like to cover the following topics. Um, the history of um, the instruction sessions. Um, I'll give a brief uh, history of it and where we are today. Uh, how I use the Cephalonian method uh, during the instruction. And Cephalonian is a word that took me a couple of years to figure out how to pronounce, so I understand completely <laughs> that it's not um, easy to pronounce right away. And how active learning is incorporated in, the, in these sessions. And at the end of the session, I'd like to switch to the Zoom whiteboard, uh, which will provide an opportunity for everybody to share um, some ideas for Cephalonian questions that you might use in a in an instruction session that you gave, as well as share some of the handouts that I use um, in the instruction that I do. And also I'd like to finish up by just um, talking a little bit too about uh, the idea that uh, showing and, and not telling um, is important um, to me and I think for the students. Um, and then I also thought about it too as uh, showing uh, and then have them show what I just recently showed. So I think it's um, it's a good experience for the students. So the history um, of the first year program, also known as Foundations, as I mentioned at Elfin University, has about uh, 75 to 120 students. Uh, all of the first year students take 12 credits to Foundations um, in the fall and spring semesters, as well as three art history courses and a number of liberal arts courses. My first experience giving the library instruction session um, for the foundation students was about 12 years ago in this very auditorium that you have on your screen, the picture. Um, of course, I think this picture is quite a bit older than that. It's probably from the late 70s. Um, I was given the opportunity to meet with about 125 students uh, in the large auditorium, and it would last for about two hours. I quickly made an appointment uh, before the session was given with the head of foundations to discuss general uh, instruction um, and what the students um, were expecting, but also asked him um, how long I should plan to uh, give the library instruction. He, he replied um, about 15 or 20 minutes. Um, so that um, sort of gave me a little pause. And so for that instruction session, I wound up presenting a PowerPoint um, with um, information about the libraries, about Skull's library, but then finished up by showing the Agnes Florida film, uh, The Gleaners and I, uh, for a remaining hour and a half, um, which is probably something that the students remember a lot more than my presentation on Skull's library. Um, I realized pretty quickly this was not the preferred way to accomplish a library instruction session. Um, when I became the art librarian in 2018, I thought, um, this was a great opportunity to reformat the library instruction 
for the foundations classes. I worked with uh, both foundations faculty along with art historians in creating these new, ses new sessions. The main goal was to provide the students with an opportunity to experience the library both online and as well as the physical space. The new session started in the fall of 2008 um, is of, comprised of two parts um, with a maximum of 10 students in each um, hour long session. The sessions are broken up into two sections. Um, one is the computer section where we work in a computer lab. Um, and I uh, provide the students with a hands-on opportunity to use the, the library website and also the catalog Primo. Uh, I hand out the Cephalonian questions, which I use as prompts to talk about the library at certain points. Um, those Cephalonian questions will be used also in the next 30-minute section, which is a tour of the library. Um, then I will go into the Cephalonian questions um, on the next slide. Um, I also provide a worksheet. Um, that the students use to for during the 30 minute session in the computer lab um, to locate a book basically um, that's related to something that they're interested in art wise. Um, we get um, we have two libraries on campus. Um, most of the I would say about 100% of the art books are located in schools libraries. So we do get the occasional student that finds a book on Herrick Library in Herrick Library, and um, we we try to to find books that are in schools libraries. So it's just a short um, walk to the stacks. Um, I've also begun handing out uh, the Library of Congress call numbers for the fine arts uh, sections, which seems to be a big hit with the students. Um, it's also, I think it's um, mainly because um, it helps facilitate the, the browsing um, that they all wanna do in the stacks. Um, and it, it's a great way to, um, make that connection between the call number and the location of the book. And that's something that I, I continue doing with um, more advanced classes. So uh, upper level classes and then also graduate students. I, I've begun handing out the uh, library of call number, call number uh, worksheet uh, to all of them. Uh, the 30 minute lab session is followed by a 30 minute tour of the library, which includes the circulation desk, reference desk, uh, commons, special collections, uh, the current art periodicals, and finishes um, on the second floor with a review of the general art collection. Um, and then the students uh, finish this um, physical tour by locating a book that they have found in the computer section of the first part of the tour, or first part of the um, session. Um, and I couldn't do any of this without the help of um, other librarians, staff, and student workers who assist with the tour and also assist with the process of locating books um, in the stacks. Um, that, that's a, they're a huge help um, incorporating um, the other librarians, but also uh, student workers who are close to relate to the students that are first year students in the art program. So the Cephalonian method that um, was created. Um, in the early 2000s at Cardiff University at the, in the UK. Um, and it very simply, it provides a way to um, sort of preload questions that the students can ask at a given point during a library session um, to facilitate um, the um, talking about the answer. Uh, the librarian can talk about the answer or a staff person can talk about the answer um, if it's in the walking tour of the librarian. Um, but it, it provides um, a students um, a model for the process of asking questions. Um, it also provides, um, creates um, a more interactive instruction session. And we will, we will um, make a couple of the Cephalonian questions um, again at the end. The integration of the Cephalonian method allows students um, uh, a great way to um, ask questions that they may not be thinking of right at the moment, but um, again, the librarian would like um, to share the answers to. Nope. So uh, active learning is an important part of um, 
the sessions. Um, again, thinking about that first session that I did, which was 15 minutes in a large auditorium, a very dark auditorium, um, showing just a, a very static uh, PowerPoint. Um, I don't think there was even um, wireless um, in, the, in the auditorium, so it was made it even harder to say, go out and look at the library website. Um, so active learning in the reformatting of these um, um, sessions for the foundation students um, allowed the introduction to of uh, active learning um, components into the uh, tours. Um, so the goal was to turn what was a one-shot lecture into an active learning experience uh, and a dive into the catalog and library website. Um, I also include uh, one of the frameworks, research as inquiry, um, as I review the catalog and website so the students can begin to think about uh, determining an appropriate scope of the investigation that they're researching, uh, using various research methods based on need, and then synthesizing ideas gathered from multiple sources. And so I use the example of um, a student might have in their art history class a two-page paper um, and they've decided to write it on Picasso. Um, so we talk about, um, again, scope um, and how, how the students would need to um, determine whether they want to talk about uh, Picasso ceramics, printmaking, painting, um, that kind of thing in a two-page paper. Um, so that's really important for them to start thinking about as they look at the uh, catalog. So what are the goals of this recreated library session? Uh, what, was, what was in my mind? Um, that we, we can't possibly cover everything in the library in 60 minutes. Um, so providing um, an opportunity to cover some things in more depth, um, such as locating a book, um, as opposed to locating journal articles or other things in the catalog uh, provides a more in-depth um, a uh, way for them to experience the catalog and library site. Um, this, the students actively use the website and catalog and actively engage in the physical space of the library. So um, I, I dis decided a long time ago that um, allowing the students to go behind, say, a locked door, so we have special collections, but allowing the students into that space um, we'll, we'll get them um, thinking about how they can use that space. So if you just point to a space and say, you can um, go in there uh, with an appointment, uh, schedule appointment, it's different than actually physically going into the space. Uh, so we try to do that with the library sessions. Um, and I also mentioned to the students, um, which is maybe a little bit odd, but that they can be successful and never step foot back in the library, successful students. Um, I tell them that, um, that the resources in the library, a lot of them are, um, they can access from their studio or dorm room. Um, but I follow this up very quickly that, that and remind them that um, not everything is available online. Um, so not all things are digitized. Um, we have free printing up to a point in the library. Uh, we have art books, um, quiet study spaces, places to take a nap that kind of thing. So I, I'm, I'm definitely aware that a student um, may enjoy visiting the library, uh, but they also um, may not for, for whatever reason. So I'm, I'm, I want them to be aware that they can access the library in many, many different ways. Uh, I'm moving away from repeating the phrase um, that librarians are here to help. So I, I don't say that, but I actually uh, model this behavior. So. Um, they may not uh, even know what help they need. So during the 30 minute session that takes place in the computer lab, um, I move around the room, uh, I observe how they're doing with the worksheet and may offer advice on subject related searching and that kind of thing. Um, I also let the experience, um, students experience, um, um, again, with, with that physical tour, um, that they um, can engage in the library in the physical space um, differently, say, than just a, a one-shot computer or one-shot computer lab uh, session for an hour. So that that's really important. 
And so now I'm going to see if I can switch and see if I can stop sharing and we can go to the whiteboard. Do you have a, a whiteboard button on your screen? I oh. do, yes. Okay, good, good. So. And I'm, this is uh, my first experience um, using the whiteboard in Zoom. Uh, I use other, other things, um, but not the whiteboard. So what I did was um, I shared, let me see if I can scroll out. Um, and so here on the left, if people would like to um, think about uh, I added a couple Cephalonian questions that I use um, in my class. Um, but if people want to click on um, click on the empty spots and add questions of their own, that would be great. I would love to see what other people would like students to ask during a session. Um, and then on the right-hand side, on the lower right, I've added a couple of the um, um, items that I um, hand out during the class, a couple of readings, um, one on the Cephalonian method or two on the Cephalonian method, uh, a plan for um, uh, how the sessions go. Um, and also, um, again, the handouts, the uh, Library of Congress, um, uh, call numbers for the fine arts, um, that kind of thing. And if people have questions um, and would like to um, ask them in the chat. I'll keep an eye on that as well. Are people able to uh, add items to On the left side, there's a little button that you can, they can select for to add text. Yes, on the left side are all the mm -hmm. um, adding text, or you can even choose um, the draw. You don't want to write your text in the little call out that I, I provided. Um, please feel free to draw. And uh, if, if anybody likes to um, uh, add anything to the chat section about having used the Cephalonian method. Um, I'd love to hear uh, what people think. Um, oh, Anna mentions what kind of readings do I give the students? So I actually misspoke. It's not, um, it's readings that I used um, for creating the Cephalonian method. So the readings are for you. Um, but the only reading that I uh, it's not necessarily a reading, but is the Library of Congress uh, call numbers for the fine arts. That that would be the only handout that I would give that I didn't create. Um, and again, um, if you can think of a way to to possibly use it, I provide a link there to the fine arts. But that would also um, give you links to other um, uh, call numbers for Library of Congress. If the links in the little um, the Cephalonian questions don't appear to be working, you can feel free to add the text of your question in a, a separate box. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Um, 
So I, the, with the, um, someone asked, um, wrote in the Cephalonian questions, I, I also ask, why not just Google uh, your sources? Uh, why use the library website? That's a question I definitely ask. Um, I definitely, um, I definitely go over um, the benefits of, say, Google Scholar um, and, and, say, WorldCat um, to upper-level students. Um, And if anybody has um, um, other instruction um, where they've uh, changed the overall uh, structure of it, and I think we've had um, certainly some examples of it in other uh, talks this morning um, where, where um, structural changes have been made. Um, but I, I would love to hear those as well. I think that's um, as we, as we, um, take new roles and 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 see how things have been done uh, we create new systems for doing things and i think um changes are good so um i'd love to hear um what other changes people have put into effect Um, someone also wrote, uh, asked students, why do you think peer-reviewed articles um, uh, is harder to read than insert uh, popular uh, choice? So great question. Um, um, the, you know, the difference between, say, a peer-reviewed um, versus um, a popular um, magazine. No, that's a that's a great one that I I I, I enjoy sharing with students. Um, someone wrote, um, I asked the students what they would do if they run into a paywall when searching on Google. Um, yeah, that's um, that's a a great um, a great question actually um, that I should add for sure um, because I do talk about it um, with most of the classes I do. Um, what happens when you get uh, say a charge for um, an article $35 or whatever. Um, so letting them know that they're they're already paying for them uh, or they can access the, most articles through ILL uh, is a great, great information to tell them.
Yeah, I, I also agree with the, um, the validating student frustration because I, I too am frustrated sometimes with the library experience. Um, so um, I, I would probably would say that I'm very happy with Primo um, and the advancements that um, that the new system has has given us, but um, it still can be very frustrating. Um, and so, yeah, acknowledging that um, is important. So I was a little weary of using the whiteboard on, on Zoom because it has the new icon there on the lower left that says new. So I think um, I would I would um, pause before I use it again before they maybe do some upgrades. Um, but I appreciate everybody adding um, ideas um, and trying it out. It's interesting. I see the little box where it says add text here, but it doesn't allow you to click in there, but it'll allow you to put yeah. it in the box. But, yeah. That's a little, the zoom controls with like clicking and dragging is a little wonky with it. Yeah, a little glitchy, I think. Yeah, another great question do i have to be in the library to get research help um yeah that's a very good question um and answer that should be shared with students for sure um We are winding down on time. So if anyone had any questions for John before um, we take our break, um, feel free to raise your hand or put it in the chat. Uh, John, thank you very much. Appreciate your time and expertise. Um, our next session is at uh, noon. Uh, so we've got just two more minutes. And the next session is titled A UDL and U Universal Design for Learning in Library Instruction by Freya Gibbon.